Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your presence here. Thank you by your spirit. Today you're moving among us. We thank you for your word that's going to go forth. It's going to be planted in the hearts of every one of them. We ask for a hundredfold, amen, a hundredfold of the harvest that's going to be uh, result of your word. We thank you for what you're about to do right now, Holy Spirit. We can't do anything without you. Without you, nothing happens. So ex unless you move, we, we, we can do nothing. We ask that you empower me, empower the words, let the words come forth with power and authority and let your words come sharp as a two-edged sword. Let it go into the hearts of the people and let it bear fruit, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Come on. Are you alive or what? Hallelujah. Come on. Want some response, some sound from you, huh? That you are there, okay? You are not somewhere else, huh? Your body is here, but your mind is somewhere else. You're here, are you? Come on. Good. Excellent. So good. I'm continuing with the topic on Thrive. And uh, I continue with, remember, the first message that I gave was about thriving by divine order, okay? Putting God first in everything, Putting God first and seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. Seeking God's kingdom means his presence, his purpose should be priority number one in every section, every part of your life. Did, did you receive that? Amen. And I think Pastor uh, Nathan preached an amazing message as well last week. And today I continue with my message on thriving. Thrive by vision. Thrive by vision. You show me your vision. And I'll show you your future. <laughs> if you can see the invisible, you'll be able to do the impossible. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? If you can see the invisible, you'll be able to do the impossible. Hallelujah. People many times ask me, how can you see God's word manifest? How can you see that happens? I'm telling you, once and for all, believe that God's word always works. Amen. Come on, God's word always works. Not my words, your words, God's word always works. And it's more than just declaring his promises. We, are, we, we have thought, uh, we, ha we, have, uh, we tell you that you need to, to declare the word of God. You need to speak the word of God. But it's more than just declaring and confessing the word. It is doing the word. It's being obedient to the word that releases the blessing of God into your life. All right, so today we're going to believe the word, and what do you mean when you say believe? It means to be able to see the word, and when you're able to see the word, you're able to receive from God. You've got to first see before you receive. You've got to first believe before you receive. And so, what do you want to see happen in your life this year, 2018? You want to see your life thriving, isn't it? But the condition here says very clearly that you need to be planted in the house of God. So if you have not been planted here in any, not just our church, but any other church, you've got to be planted in the house of God. That means in the church. Then you will begin to bear fruit in old age. The scriptures say you shall be fresh and flourishing. You can guarantee on God's word that you're going to be fruitful, you're going to be successful, you, you're going to be producing, you'll be flourishing, <laughs> you will uh, be uh, increasing, and you'll be prospering. That's God's word. That's God's word. It doesn't change for anyone, huh? And so we are going to see ourselves thriving, your marriage thriving, your family thriving. Amen? Can you see that? You have to see your work, your school thriving. You've got to see your finances thriving. You've got to see every aspect of your life thriving. And that is a personal vision that you have for yourself. But more than a personal vision, God has a great big personal vision for every single one of us. Right? But there's also the corporate vision. And what's a corporate vision? That's a church vision. We say, where do I get my corporate vision? It's a church vision. And if you're part of this church, the church vision is your vision. All right. And then you've got to be able to believe together with the church, to be able to see the multitudes, the crowds that's going to come in. People are going to give their lives to Jesus. We're going to see people being discipled, our young people, our children being discipled by the Lord. Can you see that? Can you see that we own this building, we've paid off and cancelled the debt of this building? Hi, you've got to see it before you can receive it. You've got to see it not with the physical eyes, we've got to see it inside. How many times what we see, our vision, 
it's bigger inside than what is outside. How many of you see the vision inside far bigger than what you see outside in, at this point of time? Do you? Just three? Come on. <laughs> Don't be so humble. You do, right? You see what's inside is far bigger than what's outside. Many of us, we got to see uh, how can we see that vision works this year? How can we see it happen this year? I believe some of the visions that, is good, that you have inside is going to come to pass and you're going to see you know i was praying about the church and what the aspects that we need to see happen in us uh i mean god supernatural bringing it, it to pass along with what we are you know, doing together you know uh fulfilling the assignment and, and one of the things i saw was people owning homes how many of you believing for a home and you're gonna buy a home this year yes and if you got one one house already believe that you're gonna own a second house Amen. All right. Now, you no more be uh, renting all the time. And I, I know all, some of you students, I feel for you how difficult it is to, to even find a place to rent huh? because of the prejudices uh, some uh, real estate people has towards uh, foreigners. Okay? And that's sad. But I believe that God this year is going to give you eyes to see that you're not going to be what? Uh, you don't have a land owner anymore. You're going to own the land. You're going to own a building. You know, I was speaking this and I was uh, praying this uh, in the church. And my daughter was also looking for a house. My youngest girl, this year they say they're not going to rent anymore. They're going to just buy a place. They said they're going to look for a, I'm just throwing this out as just a testimony. huh? Because I, I told her, I was talking to her. I said, believe God for the best. And then she was sharing with me, she has got two houses that was uh, open. Uh, that's within a price range that they could, uh, they, they can afford to pay. And which, which the, the bank has already agreed to uh, release that loan for them. And so both of the houses, the way she described, she wasn't very happy about it. Like one was a very old house that needs a lot of renovation and work. I said, oh, forget about it. It's going to stress you out. Okay. And the other one is kind of smaller house in a, in a lower market area. And so both the way she said, I said, maybe there's some, something else God has for you. Definitely. You know, you're going to move into your house and feel that like, this is my dream house. Right? Every person that owns a house, you know, what is it like choosing a house, the area that you want to live in or whatever it is. And so just that week itself, they're supposed to choose between the two and uh, buy a house, buy whichever that's uh, offered to them. Uh, and uh, something happened. It's a miracle. <laughs> Out of the blues, a real estate agent came to Daniel and asked Daniel, would you like to view this house that's available? It's right, it's an uptown house right in a Beautiful area, right? Just walking distance to a shopping mall, uh, Westfield shopping mall, which we know we always go there, you know, and do our shopping when we are in uh, Newcastle. And it's like, this is like, wow, the ideal house with, at the price range that they, are, they have. And it's like, most of the time when you go in, like Daniel did uh, put an offer there, but like every house is so much more ex expensive. It's beyond their budget. But this one, like, yeah, would you like to come see the house? So they went to see the house, and the house wasn't available. I mean, the house was available, but then the somebody else has bid higher, has paid higher, and so they say, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just so sorry that it's, it's not available now. And they were kind of disappointed and said, oh, we were hoping that this would be a better option because it was perfect location and price, and, a build, and a, the, 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 it's a townhouse, and it's really pretty. And what happened is, right, the next day, she called back again as Daniel was driving to decide on either of the two houses that was already earlier, offered earlier to him. And the guy, the guy that lady said, okay, are you still interested? Because the couple that uh, offered has now drawn the offer and it's now to you. And I'm not going to give to others because there are lots of long line of people that uh, are looking at the house and uh, she could have given it to somebody else who would, you know, pay more. But she offered it to my daughter and son-in-law, that price that they offered and they got the house. When I heard that and when they were like jumping, they were so, I mean, they so incredible. They, were, they couldn't believe it that God would, you know, just come out of the blues. It was a miracle because it was right before they were about to choose these two houses they were not so happy about, but there wasn't much choice because of their price offer that they were offering. So you see how God works in miracles? I'm saying to you right now, if you are 
there are quite a number, a number of hands that were put up there. I believe, I tell you, because that's how God works for me, and I believe God will work the same for you, yeah? And that you believe that God will give you the best, amen? Don't accept anything other than God's best, and uh, God's going to see that you have the best as you begin to see yourself owning the house that God's giving to you. How many of you believe that? Hallelujah. And only that, not just about the house, some of you may be starting a business. Or you're expanding the business that whatever business you're doing, believe that you're going to thrive, you're going to succeed, that, that, that God's going to expand whatever God's given to you. And believe for a life partner. How many believe for a life partner? That this year could be the year. Enough of dating all the jokers and all the... <laughs> Come on, believe that. The right person's going to come. Yes. I can tell you, story after story, start imagining, just, just start picturing yourself. Not as princess, but somebody wearing the wedding gown, going down the aisles. Start picturing. That, that's what happened to my daughter. So my middle girl wasn't married until much later. And it's like, mom, I, couldn't, I don't think I can ever find this. Every person that I'm dating is just not the right person. And she's kind of fed up. And, uh, and then in one camp, in one of the camp, the speaker brought, a wedding gown, imagine, for a church camp. Can you imagine? Who would ever think of that? Huh? Bring a wedding gown. And she's from UK. She brought the gown that she was tailored for her daughter and brought it down. And she picked my daughter and said, okay, and I want you to put on the gown. It's her. And just imagine you are dressed up as a bride. And that sure works, I'm telling you. <laughs> because she's beginning to see herself. I'm going to get married. I'm going to dress up in my gown. I'm going to walk down. And the right person, of course. <laughs> okay, so believe, see, amen. Come on. How many of you are believing for that? Let's see your hand. Oh, wonderful. We received that. Amen. I do believe <laughs> it's going to happen and it's going to happen this year. Hallelujah. Let's go to why do we have a vision? Psalms, oh no, Proverbs 29 verse 18 here says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. He that keepeth the law, happy is he. Did you get that? Where there is no vision, the people perish. We can say it this way. This way where there is vision, the people live. And where there's no vision, the people perish. There are many translations, and some of the translations say, where there's no vision, where there's no vision, people perish. The word perish can also mean no boundaries. It can also mean uh, to cast off restraint. So where there's no vision, there's no boundaries, there's no restraint, you cast off all restraint, you have no self-control, you are idle, you just do, you pass your time without no purpose at all, your life is without focus, your life is without direction, and you become a wanderer. And do you know that wanderers die in the wilderness, just as the children of Israel did? So, we don't want you... Do you live your life without purpose? If you do not know where you are going, you do not know how to get there, right? So you will live your life very frustrated. You live your life constantly upset. You are, you know, always constantly also filled with anxiety. That's not the way to live. And I pray that this year is not going to be the way. You're not going to live the way, struggling anymore, surviving anymore, but you will be thriving because God's words declare it. Amen. All right. Now, the word now, perish here, that word means, I think it's up there, huh? Means to be naked, to be exposed, and to be uncovered. So without a vision, you are exposed, you are naked, you are uncovered. Hey, in other words, if I get vision, I'm covered. If I get vision, I'm protected. If I get vision, I have self-control or I have restraint. If I have Vision, I have something to live for. I have a purpose in my life. I'm living my life on purpose. Amen. So you need a vision. I'll turn to somebody and tell them now, you need a vision. You need to turn to the person next to you, the next person, and say, you need a vision. That's right. Now let's look now. What is a vision? Vision in the Hebrew is a mental sight that is a dream or revelation. And the root word for revelation comes from the word to, that says 
to gaze at or mentally perceive, to contemplate with pleasure, to behold, to prophesy, to provide, to see. Now, also, there's so many words that the Hebrew has to interpret that one word, huh? Revelation. Wow. So what is vision? Let me describe it uh, for you a few different terms so that you help you to understand. Vision is the ability to see or to foresee something that's not visible. In other words, God's put a picture inside of you, like I said earlier, that's far bigger than what is uh, outside of you. And we all do have our vision inside. It's far bigger because God put it there. And every single one of us, every single one of you have a vision. God has put a vision inside your heart. And you have the ability to see and to be able to perceive something that's not actually actually visible yet. It's not your present reality yet. It's not what you see. But God's put inside of you and God has told you what you are and where you are going. And that is his vision for you. Now, so now where you are at is not your final chapter. God's going to take you from glory to glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. And this church, this is where we are at now, it's not our final chapter. Amen. God's going to take us from level to level to another level to another level. Praise God. So your future is definitely going to be far better than your past. Amen. Do you believe that? Come on, take, tell somebody now. Turn to your neighbor and say, your future is better than your past. It's better than the rest of your past. Whatever has happened, nothing compared to what God has for you. Amen. Now, what is vision again? Let me explain again. Vision, listen to this, is the mental picture, picture of my future that's so forceful enough to mold my present. Wow. It's God's hope. It's really God's expectation that God has put inside of you that's, that's made real by the Holy Spirit inside of you. And vision is really a breach to your future. Vision. The moment you get vision, and I pray that all of us today, if you don't have a vision, that God will give you a vision, and you have that vision, your eyes will be open. Suddenly, a veil seems to be removed, and you will have revelation. You will have a picture. You have almost like a photograph of your future. Do you have that? If you don't have, I pray that you pray that you will get that from God because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to give it to you. And you begin to be able to see yourself in your present situation, not in a present situation as it is, but it's a vision inside of you which is far bigger. And this vision inside of you is so forceful, it is forceful enough to make your present situation, whatever situation you are in, to line up with what's inside. Hallelujah. Do you know what? Real life is lived not outward, it is inward. Real life is lived from within. The scripture says in John chapter 7, verse 30, 38 here, it says that. What does it say? Jesus said this word. Jesus said that you believed in me, as the scriptures have said, out of what? Out of where? Your belly. Where's your belly? Inside, right? So out of your inner being shall flow rivers of living water. What's that rivers of living water? It's life. So life comes from the inside, not the car you drive, not the house you live in, not the position that you occupy in a company, not the amount of money that you have in your bank account. Everything will change by vision when you have vision inside of you. All right. So if you see yourself poor, what happens? You think poor. You speak poor. You act poor, right? But when you think you are rich, what happens? You think rich. You speak rich. You begin to act rich. And I'm not talking about finances, that's all. I'm talking about spiritually, what do you see inside of you? And it's going to, what's inside is going to force itself out into the outside. And it will be seen in every aspect of your life, in your relationship, in your finances, in, in your emotions, in every area. So understand this, poverty and lack is not just financial, but it is in your spirit. It's in your mind. 
It's a mentality. In the same way, life and abundance. How many of us want life and abundance? Yes? It's not on the outside too. It's from the inside. It's in the spirit. It's a spirit thing. It's a mentality. So vision is a mental picture of your future, which is perceived by faith. You need to understand for with, without faith, nothing is impossible. But with faith, all things are possible, the Bible says. Amen. So faith is given to you. How is faith given to you? We always have people say, how, how can I have uh, strong faith, uh, great faith? Well, faith comes from the word of God. Faith is given to you through God's word. So you can't have a vision without God's word operating in your life because vision operates by the word of God. Vision operates by faith. You see that? You need to get the word. So this year, if you haven't been receiving the word, if all you receive is on Sunday, I'm telling you, you're not going to have enough of the word to keep you, sustain you throughout the weeks. Uh, I mean, day by day. You need to get into the word. We're getting everyone into the Connect group. Make sure that you, you, uh, uh, you download the U version app so that you're reading the Word all the time, every day. That you get a Word inside of you. That's, then you have the faith inside of you that sustains you, that helps you to walk that out. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says one. For we walk by, how do we walk? By faith and not by sight. So what does it mean? You see? I told you earlier that faith is the word, and word is faith. The two cannot be separated. They are synonymous. They are same. So in the same way, if you want to walk, you've got to walk by faith, not by sight. Sight means what? You're not to walk by sight means appearance. You're not to walk by what you appear to be. What appears to be in front of you, maybe you appear to be sick or you appear to be weak or whatever you appear to be or what? People think about you, what they say about you, men's opinions of you. What has men or what has people been saying about you? You will never amount to anything. That you don't have the money, you don't have the influence. You will not have what you, you desire for. And they will speak men's opinions because they see, they judge you by the outward, they judge you by what appears to be. And the Bible says you're not to work to walk by what appears to be, but by faith. And faith sees differently. Faith sees from God's perspective. And you've got to see from the Word of God. And you begin to uh, believe what the Word of God says about you, or what God's Word has already declared over you, rather than what people think about you or what they say about you. Amen. Amen. All right? You have to believe the Word of God that you are the head and not the tail. Why the head and not the tail? Because the head is the one that has direction. It's in control, right? It's a head that has control. Whereas the tail has got no control. How many of you just have got no control? How people just control you and do all sorts of things to you and abuse you? No. God say, I want to make you the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. The first and not the last. Do you believe that? That God say, I've made you more than a conqueror. God say, you're blessed and highly favored. So see yourself as, a, as like a magnet, huh? Attracting all the blessings. Everywhere you go, you are blessed. Huh? Even parking lot. Hey, I'm blessed. Every time I just, so easy for me to find a parking because I'm blessed. You do that. <laughs> we all pray, God, get me a parking lot. Get me a parking. Some places are tough. Yeah, so I'm blessed wherever I go. Believe that. Begin to see that you too, your husband and wife, don't see yourself different and feel like killing each other. Why did I marry you in the first place? Huh? The very thing that attracted you to your partner, both of you now is like attacking each other now. Begin to see yourself becoming one. Oh, you're going to take a lifetime to become one. Don't give up there. I've been there. <laughs> and I thank God I'm beginning to enjoy the fruits of our marriage, especially now that our kids are all gone. We're starting all over again, a honeymoon period, like if you're just cutting again, getting to know each other. It's a good feeling, rather than, who do, who are you? I don't know you. All your life, you've been just raising your kids and you, you stay on in a marriage because of your kids, not because of your partner. That's sad, isn't it? The people who, do you know the highest rates in divorce is not right after they get married one or two years later? 
27 years, 29 years later, 30 years later, people are divorcing. I mean, crazy, right? After living for 30 years, you want to divorce? For what? Like, <laughs> that's how mad and how crazy people are. Because they have no vision for their marriage. They think that just to have babies and just bring them up and that's all. That's all to marriage. No, 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 no. God has far a greater vision for you. Look into your children. They may be <laughs> rascal. Seems like rascal now. And, uh, you know, you don't speak at their, you know, their rebellion. Now you speak into the potential that is inside of them. Speak to the king that is inside of them. And see things differently. See from God's perspective. God has already declared that over you through his word. If you don't know what he said in his word, go back to the word of God and study the word of God. And when you begin to align yourself to the word of God, to what God has said about you, then your outside will also start aligning itself to the inside. Amen. And that happens through vision. Vision is so strong. It's so powerful that it commands everything on the outside to start lining up with the inside of you. You've got to start seeing it and you've got to start receiving it. I pray that you're going to start receiving it today, even right now. The Holy Spirit could be painting a picture for you right now while you're listening to my preaching right now. And, I, and it's not just a wish, wishful thinking, oh, I wish I'm this, I wish I'm that, I wish I'm in that country, I wish I'm married to this girl, a, a wishful sort of thinking. It is a real picture of who you are inside and what is what you are, what God has given you inside. If God has not given you the things, then it's not something that you need, okay? It's not part of your destiny. So, see, begin to see yourself. What do you see? The new home that you're going to move in. How many of you can see that? Huh? See the, that you are succeeding in your new job? Come on. Can you see yourself married? Can you see yourself, your children getting saved, your loved ones getting saved? Can you see yourself prophesying? Can you see yourself laying hands on the sick and they recover? Amen. Can you see God powerfully using you? Can you see C3, KL, church is going to grow and expand? Amen. Can you see that? Can you see that we're going to own this building? We're not going to pay for it anymore? That God's going to give us a better place? Amen. That this Church is going to be a, 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 an impact and influence here, not just in this city, but this nation. Even globally, God's going to use our church to be a blessing. Can you see that? Wow. Pastor just went to India and came back. He never wanted to go to India because he thought he married the Chinese and he couldn't speak Tamil. So it's no good. Definitely, India is out of the picture. And this is one... One, thing, one, well, one time, first time he ever accepted the invitation, he will tell you more about it, but now he's so in love with India. It's like, I want to go there again. They loved him. He thought that they are not going to accept him. In fact, the crazier he, he is, the more they like him. And they said, ah, you've got to come back again and you've got to bring your wife. In fact, I got a, a call a few days after he came back and they're, they're like still, they like him so much, like they couldn't like, Oh, they're still talking about all the meetings and they're saying, we miss you so much. And then in, they invited me to go. Wow. I'm going to go. Anybody wants to go with me to Chennai? <laughs> Women's conference. Hey. At least they, they allow women to speak. Huh? <laughs> uh -huh. So, can you see that? That God's going to expand your business God's going to bless you that's not just for your family but for the kingdom of God can you see that can you see yourself signing a contract can you see that can you see all that we're going to start allowing the Holy Spirit to show us give us a vision of what he wants you to know about your destiny that God has for you let me show you another verse. Psalms 33 verse 11 says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord. What's the counsel? Counsel means advice, the plans. That means God's advice and God's plans for your life. How long does God's counsel last? It says forever. That's a long, long time, okay? It doesn't matter if you messed up. You fail, you make mistakes, but God say His plans for you stands forever. Okay, another scripture here to encourage you. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that stands. 
that shall stand. Hallelujah. So in other words, man can try to manipulate or plot or fabricate whatever it is, and it's going to fall. Huh? But God's plans and destiny for your, for, the, for your life will stand. It means it will prevail. It will succeed. Hold on to God's word. I know that God has a plan for your life. God has a destiny for you. And it will stand forever. It will last. It will last. It will last. So don't see what is happening in front of you now. Don't, don't judge by what's happening in your life right now. I want to say this to some of you. Maybe you're really, really discouraged with what is happening in your life right now. And God will give you vision today, huh? God wants to you to see. In fact, God wants to give you a vision in order to move you into your purpose. 2018 is not going to be a year that you're going to struggle. You have no direction and you are lost your focus and, and you're wondering. No, God's going to bring you back to your purpose again. What's your purpose that God's created you for? And we, we're going to not just talk about vision, but we, we're going to see vision. We're going to work out the vision. So we're going to show you how you need to write out the vision that God has for you. And why the vision is so important, what happens inside. It is like a creative force inside of you. You know, faith is a force. And a force is able to uh, uh, force something that's unseen inside to become seen. Something that is invisible to be, become something visible. Vision is a powerful force. And vision is perceived by faith. So faith that you have is a powerful force. And this faith that I talk about is not common faith. It's not everybody has that faith. It's the faith of God. It doesn't come from, from people or from, it's not the natural, it's God. God gives you that faith for you to believe. That's why people think you're crazy. Like, oh, you Christians are crazy believing this and believing that because you, ha you haven't received that gift of faith. When you have that faith, you just believe. <laughs> Vision is powerful. Vision has power. In fact, vision is power. Without vision, there is no power. With vision, it's power. Vision gives you the power to see God's plans in spite of all the obstacles that you are in. Praise God. Are you going to some obstacles right now? Vision will help you to persevere. Faith inside of you will help you to persevere. Listen to this. huh? What vision is, let me explain again. I want to give you a thorough picture of how powerful and how important it is for you to have vision. Vision without action is just mere dreaming. You're dreaming. Action without vision is just passing time. You hear that? But action and vision change the world. Hallelujah. To be a world changer, you need to have vision and also action. Now say to your neighbor now, say to somebody beside you and say, your world is about to change. Your world is about to change, all right? Get vision and your world is about to change. <laughs> I want to close with this. And it's also only one point. After understanding what vision is all about, the first step in bringing a vision to pass is the art of transition. Did you get it? It's something so simple, yet it is the most difficult thing for most people. When I, it's not, we are not exempted from this, huh? Oh, it's so difficult for a lot of us to leave our past, to let go of our past, to go into our future. And that's what we did. You know that in 2017, when you were at the watch night service, <laughs> when the clock touched 2018, something changed, a cycle ends, and there's a new beginning, a new start of something new. And it's the new year 2018, as we know. But, you know, many of us, it's just another day. Nothing has changed. <laughs> because we're not willing to let go of the past. To go into your future, you must let go of whatever past it is that is maybe good. It may be a success that you have. It may be a failure. It could be a regret. It could be a mistake that you have made. It could be... A, Something that you feel ashamed of. God is saying to some of you now to let go of those paths. Stop rehearsing and stop talking about it. You know, some of you are still holding on to it and you're not letting it go because you are still talking about it. 
You're still imagining it, imagining it inside your mind. And it's, it's, it's carried back to the new year, 2018, and God says, stop it. Act like it never existed. Act like it never happened. And you're going to erase it out of your mind, out of your spirit, out of your heart, and you will stop repeating it to somebody else. Huh? Because if not, you're not going to enter your new year. The new cycle, the new season that God has for your life. I want to give you this word, the story of Joshua in closing. Joshua is right at the threshold of the promised land. Look here. I believe this is a prophetic word or a rhema word for us as a church. And here looks, uh, let's see what scripture is that we want to see yet. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 11, okay? 6 to 11. Take the one, 6 to 11. God says here, be strong and of good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for inheritance to the land. God saying to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Because you're about to get your inheritance, which I've swore to your fathers to give you. Then again, a second time he's saying, I mean, God doesn't waste his words, okay? For him to say a second time he's saying, only be thou strong and very courageous. For you may observe to do according to all the law. What are to be strong and courageous for? To do the word of God. Well, it takes courage to do the word of God and to act on the word of God. Do you know that? Because in the natural, it's like crazy. It just doesn't make sense. But when God asks you to do something, he asks you to step out by faith. You are to do it. You are to act on that. And that, that takes courage. And it says you are not to turn from it. To the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, meaning that you, you must not stop declaring the word of God from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, day and night, so that what you may observe to do again according to all that is written thereof. For then, the scripture says, you shall make yourself, your way prosperous. Who's going to make your way prosperous? Is that God? No, he says, you are going to make yourself prosperous. And you shall have good success. Look here. Look at that. The second time he said that you are to what? Obey the word of God. Do the word of God. Obey the word of God. Do the word of God. And the third time here now, it says, be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord your God is going to be with you wherever you go. Three times, imagine God told Joshua to be strong and to be very courageous. <sighs> wow. So I don't know about you, whatever it is in your life that you are afraid of, that you're controlled by fear or you're controlled by people's words, you're controlled by people's opinions about you, you're controlled even by somebody you hate maybe. And they seem to control your thoughts all the time because you hated them so much. Huh? Whatever it is, God says, stop. <laughs> be strong, be courageous. Don't be controlled by anything anymore or anyone anymore. And take charge. Amen? And begin to know that you are going to make your way prosperous. You are going to have good success. And then come to this one. Joshua commanded the officers of the people. Listen here. It says, pass through the host, command the people, saying, prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. Can you see the three Ps here? Can you see the three Ps? Prepare, saw the word here. Pass over and possess hallelujah i believe this is a word for from god to all of us that we need to prepare our hearts how many of you prepared your hearts for god to drop a vision for you maybe you may have a vision but god has a far bigger vision for you than what you had yesterday or last year you know while i was worshiping i think two weeks ago while i was here like god showed me that he wants to take me higher take me high so like i saw myself like an eagle soaring up there like having great vision over you know the view and say as you so high you tell my people to have a, a so higher so they have a bigger vision and that's what god is saying god wants us to have a bigger vision and we will soar we will not just uh, depend on yesterday's vision to carry us into the new year 
Prepare our hearts. Are you preparing your hearts for the vision that God's going to drop inside of you? Are you going to get the word of God? Are you going to get faith inside so that you have faith in the vision that God's given to you? And then, you know, God didn't just say this to Joshua, huh? He said it to the people. That means this assignment to get the vision is not just for one person. It's for every one of us. This vision for the church, C3, to win disciple and empower is not just for the pastors. It's for every one of us. Amen? Are you a member of this church? If you are, then this vision is for you. That you embrace it and say, yes, God. I'm going to prepare my heart, uh, embrace the vision that God has for this church. I'm going to run with it. I'm going to the second step. What does it say? Pass over. So you have to let go of the past. You have to cross over the Jordan to, into something new. Your future. The children of Israel is going into a new place with a new way. In the same way, the church. I'm speaking to the church right now. How many of you are at church C3? Hallelujah. You are part of this church. God's saying to us that we're going to go into a, this new season in a new way. You're not going to depend on our past. Thank God for our past experience. Thank God for our successes. Thank God for our experiences, whatever success that we have. But God is saying, I'm calling you to go into another place this year. And it's not going to be done one way. Maybe you've done it this way, but it's not going to be the same way you're going to go into your future. And we cannot do ministry this year the way, same way that we did ministry last year. I believe God's saying to you right now that you got to start seeing new strategies for your ministry. How many of you are ministry leaders here? Huh? I believe there's a word for every one of you who are a ministry leader. You, you will get a fresh vision from God. Okay, you're not going to live frustrated, complaining about why my team is not working, but you're going to take charge, amen? And you're going to start believing God with a vision for your department or for your ministry and see God works. You're going to let go of the past. Some of you are new. You have been appointed as a new leader for, for this new season. And you're not going to do the, the way your predecessor has been doing things. All right? Thank God for them. But God's going to give you a fresh vision. How many of you are uh, key ministry leaders here? Can I see you? Uh, can you stand up, please? Can you stand up, please? All of you who are key ministry leaders, stand, stand. That's right. Okay? KA, anyone's representing KA for the... Uh, KL Church here, yep, we got Jen Alive, yes, we got Corporate Prayer Leaders, not here yet, somebody please stand on behalf of uh, Nisha, huh? Uh, worship, we have, do you have worship stewards? Please stand, uh, hospitality, media, come on, fantastic, at the start of the year we dedicated all these leaders, protocol, new people, creative team, whatever it is, come on. Stretch your hands to these people. Amen. God's going to give them new vision for the new year. This is going to be a new year, a new season. And God's going to impart new vision to them. Close your eyes. Raise your hands right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get the vision. See the vision. Begin to see the vision that God has given to you. See. Begin to open your eyes. Open your spiritual eyes. Open your hearts. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I speak right now into every one of the spirit, into their hearts. You give them a clear vision today that as they see that vision, they're going to run with that vision. They're no more going to be lagging behind and they're going to run with the vision. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, receive that right now. In Jesus' name, receive that right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, receive that right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Now, maybe some of you said, well, uh, I'm not a ministry leader or maybe you're part of the team. Then you, you know, uh, work together with the team leader and believe that this year new things are going to happen, that change is going to come. Amen. Something is going to change. Our ministry of yesterday is not going to work for today right now because God's bringing us into a new place. And we're not going to sing the same old song, same old, same old, right? It's going to have new songs, right? And we're not going to come to church the same way how we came to church last year, are we? No! We're going to dance, we're going to come excited, we're going to come early, all prepared, the day before, and come into God's house. We, we're not going to, you know, just run connect groups away that we run connect groups previously, do we? We're going to believe for multiplication. We believe that God's going to multiply leaders. We're going to believe that God's going to, you know, that we will be raised up to care, disciple other people so that everyone will, you know, be strong and moving forward to what God has for us. 
But maybe it's none of any of the ministries that I'm talking about. Maybe God's speaking about a memory that you have to let go of to pass over to this new place. Let go of the memory. It's killing you. Let go today. Let go of that disappointment. Let go of that disillusionment. Let go of the attitude that you had. Let go of the mindset that you had. Let go of the habit that's controlling you. The way of doing things that you've been doing all the time. Today is the day they're going to shake it off and let it go. And say, I'm going to cross over. Why? Because until you moved and passed over, you're not going to possess. And how many of us are possessors here? We want to possess what God has given to us. The vision that God's given to us. It's not even a one-year plan. It's a five-year plan. God may give you even a 10-year plan. It could be even after you die. The vision still carries on. How many have that sort of a vision? May God empower us, help us to see the vision that He has for our sons and daughters, not just our natural sons and daughters, but spiritual sons and daughters, that they'll be raised up, they'll be released into their destiny. How many of us believe that? Yeah? Now, this is very important. I have given out, I think, a slip of paper that is like that the yellow one can somebody raise this up it's yellow huh? mine is white because first time I've printed it in white okay if you don't have anybody don't have that paper the orange paper please put your hand up put it up quickly okay now pass it around okay this is very important if you're not in a connect group I challenge you maybe from after this service Today, get into a connect group because this is what you are going to discuss about in your connect group. Okay, put your hands up. Keep your hands up if you don't have the yellow uh, form. Huh? Okay, it's my vision for my life in 2018. Habakkuk said very clearly, God's going to give you a vision. You need to write it down. Write it down. A lot of us, we have a vision but we are not writing it down. And so we're not running, the, running with the vision that God's for you. Write down the vision for this year 2018. What is your personal life vision? If you don't have a personal life vision from today onwards, write a personal life vision. Just your personal life vision. All right. Huh? And how do you know what's a personal life vision? It's always in line with your greatest strengths and your greatest abilities and your passion. Very simple. All right. And I wrote my personal life Vision is to empower people to live out God's purpose for their life. Something very simple, okay? One line only. Don't write multiple lines, okay? You can't remember. So just one line and then your family, what you want, your vision for your family, what you want, the kind of family you want to have, okay, the kind of marriage. Maybe some of you need to talk with your partner and start writing vision for your marriage. Alright? And that's number three. It talks about health, uh, finance and career. Pastor, talk to you about what? To plan, huh? Your giving. Not just give impulsively, huh? Your career, your education. Okay, here it doesn't write education. Maybe we should put that education as well. Huh? How high you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve? Your master's, your PhD. Number three, health and fitness. This year, I'm going to start my exercise regime. <laughs> Number four, hobbies, recreation, holidays, whatever you have. God wants you to thrive also. Huh? That you know how to fill up your emotional tank. You don't allow your emotional tank to be so low until you burn out. God has called you to thrive, not to burn out. Huh? So plan for recreation and holidays. Then next, spiritual church ministry plan. If you're a connect leader, write your we're going to, uh, as Connect leaders, in our next meeting, we're going to write out, write out your Connect group vision as well. Huh? And then friends and community. Yes? Come on. Here it says, dare to dream big. Three things I love about myself. What do you like about yourself? Nothing. This must be something that you like about yourself. Okay? I'm organized, I'm disciplined, I'm compassionate or whatever. Three things I'm ready to let go. Maybe perfectionism, maybe being always want to be in control or holding on to my offenses. I want to let go of my offenses. Three things I want to achieve the most. What do you want to achieve the most? Okay? What? Write that down. Three things that I will improve myself. Yep. 
I, I wrote down, I said, one of the things I want to do is I want to try new things. I want to go into new areas I've never done before. And last year has been a cruising year for me because I, I, I'm a person that's... Uh, uh, I, li- I like to be in my comfort zone huh? I'm a very cautious person I don't like to take uh, new steps And do new things And this year God challenged me and said Come on uh, In my heart I felt a nudge and said Yes God, this year I'm going to try new things I'm going to venture up the f- People invite me, I will not turn down And say no Sometimes I'll turn down because I was lazy I mean, I'm, I, I'm very comfortable ministering in this church But you ask me to go into a new pl- place I feel very, very Uncomfortable, so I don't like to take new challenges. No, the moment you 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 take what you say seriously, I wrote it down. And next week, I got a call from Focus and the family and said, "We'd like to invite you uh, for a mothers and daughters uh, banquet to be our speaker." Huh? Look, God takes what you say seriously. All right. So when you write it down and say, "Yes, God, this is what I want to do," it's gonna happen. God's gonna open doors for you. God's gonna open doors for you. Yes, God open opportunities for you. Amen? <laughs> and you're going to dare to walk through it and not hold back. Dare to take those risks, new steps, uh, new, uh, new risks that uh, God opened the doors for you. Did you. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Okay? Yes. How many of you? Start writing it down and uh, uh, take that to your connect group so that you can share with each other, be accountable to each other to work out your vision, to fulfill the vision. God is for you. Praise God. This is a year of thrive. How many of us amen to that? A year of fruitfulness. Yes, this is going to be a year of possession. This is going to be a year of promotion. This is going to be a year of dominion, of authority. This is our time. This is our day. This is our season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's close the eyes right now. Across, uh, I just want to give an altar call to maybe some of you need some closure. Maybe you need some closure today. You do not want anything of the past to follow you into your tomorrow. If that is you, whatever it is, the things that I've just mentioned, maybe regrets and shame or mistakes of the past or even your successes, successes or what has mowed you before. God say, I want anything that is not of me, not part of the destiny to be cut off. Right now And if that's you And God speaking to your heart I want you to raise your hands Because I'm going to pray with you right now That you're going to enter tomorrow Totally a brand new person Without all these things hanging over you Can you raise your hands quickly As we're going to pray right now Yes, stand with me please Stand with me everybody Stand with me and raise your hand If that's you Raise your hand We're going to pray together At this close of this service Hallelujah Let's pray together Is that you? Yes I'm I'm going to cross over. I'm going to pass over. I'm going to be a possessor. I'm not going to stay in my uh, uh, limitation anymore, God. I'm going to break out. Hallelujah. And God's going to draw it out this year as we raise our hands. Now, pray with me. Close. As all eyes close, let's pray together right now. Pray after me. Repeat after me this prayer. Will you say this after me and say, Father, Father in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. First of all, I ask you to forgive all my sins, whether knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers me. Lord, give me the strength today to cut off everything that does not belong in my life. To bring closure, I release everything from my body, from my mind, from my spirit, from my emotions, everything that that does not belong to my life. I cut it off right now. I want to love you I want to know you. I want to honor you. Today, I give you permission to cut off everything that does not belong to my future. That's right. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you that you are the author and finisher of my faith. 
I thank you for a brand new start. I thank you for a new beginning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Raise your hands. Continue. Raise your hands. Going to pray right now all across here. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I come to you for every single one of the person that is seated here right now. Standing here. I take authority over every spirit of harassment over their lives. That's in a path that tries to follow them into the future. Right now, I rebuke the devourer. I break the devourer. Whatever that tries to attack them and when they are weak, I break the control of the, of the enemy over their lives. I break it in the blood by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that 2017 was the last day. And it's the last day. And we declare that it's a new season, that there will no more struggle. We will no more struggle. Hallelujah. We are going to be released into a new year of dry. Hallelujah. We decree and we declare right now that we release into a new place, into a new beginning. We will have a different mindset from how we were before. God, we thank you that we're going to see things differently. We're going to have fresh vision from you. Hallelujah. We're going to focus on your promises of, that you have for our lives. We're going to move forward and possess our vision and see come to pass. We believe that the weeks and the months to come. We believe that everything that you have called us to do and to be and to have will be released into our hands. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray right now for one minute. Let's just press into God. Let's pray right now for one minute. Let's press into God. Hallelujah. Robust. over my life. Hallelujah. Shake up every fear out of my life. Hallelujah. Anxiety. There's no place in my heart and in my thoughts. Hallelujah. Praise you God. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to release boldness into your life. Courage and boldness. Cry out and say God, I, I want the courage and boldness to move into my future. Oh, Rabashi. my life. I open my life to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open my heart to you. Open my mind to you. Come Holy Spirit. Come into my life right now. Move into my life. Praise you God. Praise me God. Praise you God. Praise you God. Praise you God. Hallelujah. You have things that are bad that happen in your life. Church, I want to tell, I want you to listen here very carefully. If things in your life that has happened that is bad, well, take that as lessons that God's that you have learned that's going to lead you to a bigger place that God has for you. Don't curse the things that are bad that has happened in your life. Just take that as lessons that God's going to use to strengthen you, to take you to a bigger place. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, that's where we're going to go. Amen. A bigger place, a bigger place than what, where you are right now. Begin to see it in Jesus' name. Begin to see it Let's wait on him right now. Close your eyes right now. Hallelujah. Calm down your heart. Calm down your mind. Shut every concerns out. And we're going to say, Holy Spirit, paint a new picture for us. Give us a new vision. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Can you see the picture that God wants you to see? See it right now. The Holy Spirit always communicates to you in visions 
and pictures. Can you see it now? Because if you only can see, you will be able to receive. If you can see the invisible, then you can do the impossible. God says, see now. Speak right now. Get the vision right now. Get hold of the vision right now. Holy Spirit, moved into this place. Moved into this place. Mighty name, Jesus. We receive it right now. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Nothing but your goodness, your mercies, your love, your glory, your power, your authority. You're going to walk right in the place that you have put us in, that you have positioned us to occupy. We will not be wavering. We will not allow our minds to waver. We will not allow our hearts to waver. We will not allow our steps to waver. We will be focused. We will be men and women of vision. Men and women that see. Men and women with determination, with discipline. Hallelujah. Men and women of clear vision. Men and women of faith. Faith in your word. We see it right now. We receive it right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you see it? Do you see it? How many of you see something? See your hand. Come on. Yes. Come on. Maybe you think it's your imagination, all right? Whatever it is, God uses your imagination too. But you see it. Hold that picture. Write it out. Amen? Write it out. And we're going to run with it. Are you ready? We're going to praise God. One more time, yes? We're going to sing and celebrate and uh, whatever song. Come on, Kito. <laughs>